Greetings from Carrington Cares. I'm Rob Carrington. Praise the Lord 19 or message 19. Thank you for your time being with me. And thank God that there is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I'd like to start again with Hebrews chapter 9, a portion of verse 26 and beyond. But as it is, he has appeared once for all. And that's Jesus appeared. I start again. But as it is, he, Jesus, has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, the crucifixion of himself, and the rising from the dead of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. After we die once, this body is gone, this temporary body is gone. There's something more after that. There's the judgment. And we spoke of that judgment before. The judgment seat of Christ for believers. And the judgment seat, the white throne judgment for those who have rejected Jesus Christ. And that involves the first resurrection and the second, second resurrection. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting for him. And I believe we can safely say the second time that Jesus appears is recorded in the book of 1 Thessalonians. One of the places it's recorded. This is the resurrection, the first resurrection. Some call this the second coming of Christ, some call this the rapture, depending on your theology about end times. But both theologies agree that Jesus is coming again, and there is the resurrection of the believers in him. And that's called the first resurrection. This is for, from 1 Thessalonians 4. Chapter 4, starting at verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep. And the word sleep is used because the person who has died will awake. Sleep is temporary. Our body is temporary. There will be a resurrection body that the believers will receive when Jesus comes again for the first resurrection. So asleep here means that body we have, temporary body, has died. Okay, it's gone. <laughs> it's not sleeping, <laughs> but it says asleep because we will awake. It's referring, it's pointing towards the resurrection, a new body that we will, will receive. But do... But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. When Jesus comes back, God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep, those saints those believers in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, their soul that is in the dwelling place of God now will come back with Jesus. That's what that's referring to. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will not proceed those who have fallen asleep. We will not precede them in, in the resurrection body, receiving a new, new body. The resurrection. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of, 
an archangel, and with the sound of the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Meaning those souls that came back with Jesus are go going to be united with a new body, a resurrection body, first, before any, anyone else, before those who are alive when Jesus comes back. Alive on this earth, meaning. <laughs> and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them. There'll be the uniting of ourself and our loved ones who have gone before us with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And it says, when we will, all, we will meet in the air together with the Lord, we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And for us, if Jesus was to come right back now, and Jesus could come right back now for this first, first resurrection at any time, this is what would happen to us. It's, it's explained in here, but not, not specifically just what happens to, to us if Jesus came back right now. But in, we're going to go to Corinthians. All right. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, we'll start. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood... Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, meaning we shall not all, not everyone, will of the believers of Jesus Christ will have died when Jesus comes again for the first resurrection. We shall not all sleep, we should not all be dead. Uh, this body, this temporary body dead. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable. And this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come, shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So, if Jesus came back right now, you and me we would be changed in a twinkling of an eye. And then we'd meet in the air together with those who have uh, passed on before us their souls, which would receive a new body, and we'd be with the Lord forever. And I want to share a song. It's called, uh, It Is Well With My Soul. And it was written by Horatio Spofford, who lived from 1828 to 1888. And this is what happened to Horatio Spofford before he wrote this song. What could, have, what could have motivated Horatio Spofford to pen the words to the mighty hymn, It Is Well With My Soul? I'm taking this, uh, this what I'm reading now from uh, Dr. Uh, David Jeremiah. I believe you're a doctor, aren't you, Dr. De <laughs> David Jeremiah? And uh, his book, uh, Journey, I think is very good in helping us to walk with the Lord. So I'm just going to share a little bit from what he wrote, and uh, hopefully another time I can share more of what he wrote. 
What could have motivated Horatio Spofford to pen the words to the mighty hymn, It Is Well With My Soul? Before writing the hymn, he had lost his only son in 1871, been financially ruined by the Great Chicago Fire of the same year, and then lost his four daughters at sea in 1873. Great loss, five of his children he saw die before him. And I'm so sorry if you've had one of your children pass away before you. I don't know the pain that you feel. I have not had that experience and I hope I never do. But you know what? Horatio Spofford could pen this song, make this song, because he believed in that resurrection of the believers to be united with God forever. He believed, I believe, that the soul of his children was with his Lord and Savior, their Lord and Savior, after they passed away from this earth. And he'd see them again. And that's why I believe he wrote this last verse. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. We'll actually see Jesus Christ who we believe in. We'll see our loved ones who have gone before us to be with him again. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. He could see his kids again. He could see this Lord and Savior again. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump, as I read in the scripture, the trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I'm going to do just verses 3 and 4 right now. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the This world isn't it. <laughs> when uh, we're gone from this world, our loved ones are gone from this world. Oh Lord, because of you, Jesus Christ, nailing our sins, all our sins to the cross to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you can give us eternal life with you forever because you rose from the dead. You defeated death. And we will never have to die, be separated from you, 
because you died for us and rose from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. And when we leave this world, we'll soar to be with you. And when you return, Lord Jesus Christ, you'll give us all, all your believers, a resurrection body, a body like yours, to live forever with you. And we'll see our loved ones together with you. And we'll be united. And I believe we'll be able to hug one another and, and, and love one another again forever and ever. And never have to say goodbye again. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for your time.